Hi, I'm Lewis Johnson, and I'm here for Starlix. And today we'll be looking at my style and technique. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about my bass. This is a Music Man bass, and uh, Leo Fender made this bass especially for me. I went down to his uh, bass making plant in Anaheim, where they make, where they used to make all the Fender equipment. He sold the company, and now it's called Music Man. And this was one of his first prod products, and he wanted me to promote it to start the selling and increase the sales. He gave me this and about 10 others, <laughs> which all of them are different. Some has two pickups, some have no frets, and rosewood neck, shellac neck, and, you know, different color bridges and tuning pegs. But what's different about this bass is he made the pickup very strong. The magnets in it are very strong. And uh, I remember when it was lying there and it was guts was all hanging out, he was doing things to it that was making it more powerful, which I technically don't know what he did. But um, to make every bass like this, it, it would just cost too much. And that's why this bass sounds so heavy and so strong, because it was specially made for thumping. And I'm in the process now of making some basses with Kramer, and we're going to put them out and sell them all over the world so you can pick up a Lewis Johnson bass made by Kramer pretty soon and they'll have different things than this one or any other basses be made for thumping. I've made some changes to make it easier to thump. And now before we get started let's tune up. Okay the first string we're gonna do is the E string. I like to check them by hitting them open like this and then hitting an overtone next string. That way we can go to the A. Because as a thumper, as you start thumping on the bass, you'll find out that you knock the strings out of tune by, you know, banging on it real hard. So you always have to check your tuning. Okay, so now we we'll go to the D. And you check that with the overtone. And the G. And you go to the G. You have to remember because as you pull on the strings, they start getting loose. So you have to check your tuning every time you thumping a lot on a bass. And now we'll start with lick number one. And this is how you do that same lick slower. hitting the E string with my thumb, the side of my thumb, like, uh, and then I have a, a thump in the middle of it, and then I immediately go to the index finger for the, or that, then I hit it twice, and then <laughs> I have to remember myself. Okay, then after I hit the index finger, and then I come back down and go, and then I go up. It's a new style of playing bass, and uh, well, it goes back far away, but uh, it's kind of new to a lot of bass players that have been playing with their fingers. And I started doing it, when I started playing bass, I played like this, with my thumb. <laughs> And then, um, when I was a teenager, that got boring, and so I started. <laughs> I just started pulling the string. We didn't have a rhythm machine. We used to have one, and we lost it, so I had to be my own rhythm machine. So I went. Now, that's just the thumb. You gotta remember, a lot of people do that with the index and the thumb, but I'm doing it with just. It's hard to do, as you can see. And then after I started doing that, I busted up my thumb real bad one day, so I had to figure out another way to do it. I started adding the index finger.
and then I busted up my index finger and my thumb. So I didn't have any other way to play. So I just started pulling the strings like. And then I started combining it. That, I broke up my, my finger <laughs> on that, and I started. And what that is, is you're just hitting the strings with your fingers and your... I'm taking the two index fingers and picking out the A and the G string. And I'm hitting it. At first, this is very hard to do. Any kind of thumping on the bass is hard to do because the strings are made out of metal. But if you keep doing it, you'll get good. And it's not easy, but you know, if you want to play like that, you have to practice. And this is one of those licks I used to wake up my parents at 6 o'clock in the morning with. It. And now this is that lick slowly. You have to hit this string like... Now that's the trick when you pull this one and at the same time you immediately go down here and bend it over with my left hand. And with the right hand you have to hit it as hard as you can, hit it again and then pull up. And you notice when I pull up I put my hand far because when I do that, when I come back down it gives me the power that gives me the name Thunder Thumbs, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like... And that's the other one, when you go... Uh, you hit the G string, you hit the G string, and then, and then you hit this string, D string with your thumb, which is a totally different sound than if you was to go pluck it. So it's it sounds slicker. When you if you you did it like this, it sounds harder. You you pulling. So some things when you're thumping, you want to hit with your thumb going down, you pull it up, and then come down with your right hand. Pull up, and come down, and that'll make it flow better and much easier for you to thump. And now we're going to play it slowly. And now this bass lick is a very common lick that every bass player that thumps, they all do this lick. The only difference is, is they can't do it this fast. <laughs> and um, what I'm doing is I'm hitting the E octave on the uh, a string and then pulling up. It's just octaves. And I'm hitting an A before each one. And I'm just going up, up and down chromatically.
just go crazy. And once more, slowly. And this is lick number four. And it's a very unusual lick because most of the bass thumpers usually place their thumps around E because it's open and you can pull all the strings around. It's very easy to play in E. But most thumpers cannot play like that in another key. The secret to that is, is you have to have your thumb on the E string and you use that as the key note and you play around with the other fingers like this. Now what I'm doing is, is I'm using my A just like if I was playing with my E open. See it's always open and I'm, I'm having that always not open, but closed, but always closed. A little slower. As you practice, you can develop it and go faster. And this is lick number five. Okay, now this lick is a little bit more difficult to play because you're not thumping with your thumb and your index finger. Actually, you're using your two fingers and you're pulling your thumb and your index finger and you're pulling. You're constantly pulling and you're adding a thump with this left hand and this, and this goes and you're also coming down which adds a certain amount of thump to it. And then you can hit the string as you reach the peak. just like triplets. And one more time, slowly. Now lick number six. And how you do that is you slide. You use your thumb and you hit and you go kind of above the bridge. <laughs> At least I do. 
and you gotta get a feel in the neck for how you know soon you could get up here. The timing you have to keep it in your head, and you just uh, every time it's different. And then as soon as you get up to the A, you instantly jump up to the D string, and you don't pull it like that because it would come out too strong and it wouldn't give you enough time to do the rest. And then you. Or you can go. Just constantly, just keep. And this is how you do it slow. doing that you go faster When you're playing that one, you got to be careful because if you're new playing it, you never played like that before, right here will start hurting real bad. Matter of fact, it might even start bleeding because you use roto sounds, which I'm using right now. you pulling on the string, and this is metal again, a nickel, silver, and <laughs> it will tear your skin up. So uh, you could go down to the market, the store, any store, and buy a thumb thing that they count money with for your thumb and cut off the tip and slip it over your thumb put some tape right here if you want to practice a lot without damaging your fingers okay and now this is lick number seven <laughs> okay now this one sounds a little bit like the other one but it's different because you're going you're doubling up on the slide, which is very hard to do. You have to. But between the, the distance from here and you get here, you have to think so that when you get up here, you can double up before you go. You know? You should be able to do that by itself. Then later, add. Okay, and now, this is that same lick slowly.
And now this is lick number eight. It's from the album Out of Control. One of the songs I used it in is Save Me. And it was a bass solo on this. It's a variation of it. It went... Now this lick is a little difficult to play because you're not sliding and you're not giving yourself a pause. You're not. You actually have to stay there and do it. This is like you can't run away. <laughs> you have to just sit there and you have to be a rhythm machine. You know, in high school they used to call me HPM, which means human bass machine, because <laughs> I would uh, sit in the room an orchestra class in the room with the bass amp on and I would just and you know you keep doing it over and over repetition sounds like a machine and how you do that slow is you just it's, it's sort of weird because you don't know when you want to make a note or when you want to make it just a, a overtone like sometimes you might want to actually hold it down or you may just want to you know so you can do it slowly by just This is the fun lick to play because for me, when I first started thumping, this was the rhythm that I played. And it would always get people's attention. So for me, this is kind of special. I like to, to play it in this lick. And that little part in there is like a, I don't know what you call that. It's, I just created it and, you know, it's just, I'm just pulling the strings and hitting them open. Like that. It's just a straight going down, straight, it's going down from the G string all the way to the E in one line. And this is lick number nine. It's a triplet, and it's very difficult to do. And everybody asks me, how do you do that? And now I can finally tell you that I don't know. <laughs> I just go. And I, after I do the, I kind of kind of hit an overtone or a note. It depends on how it feels. I hit that twice, then I come down. Now let's take a look at the other hand. Okay, now this is lick number ten. How you play that is, is you have to 
use three fingers and you go you kind of hit two fingers on the E and then use the third finger for the octave so the two front fingers index fingers are for the bottom note and the higher finger is for the octave and that's good for any time you want to throw in a fancy lick you can go and just go down And now I'll play that slowly for you. And this is lick number 11. Okay, now, how you play that is you go, you hit three notes with one finger, and then you go. And now, this is lick 12. Okay, this is that lick slowly. I use this lick when I'm playing on stage live. It's a, mostly I use it on live sh live shows when uh, we're doing a change. And I'll go down. It, it gives you a, a, the way that it ends. It can let you go to any note, you know, or you can. It's like a thing I do just in passing from one key to another. You can just throw it in, or you could just do half. <laughs> just half of it. Or you can just do that much. Or. 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 And this is lick number 13. That is hard to play because you have to you have to hit a double octave at the same time, a high string, G string, and an A string, and then slide it. it as you can see, it's very difficult because it's hard to keep your fingers on those strings and then thump too.
what you can do is on the G you can also bend just the last note which will give it effect of a and this is lick number 14 Double strings, octaves, right here, and then keeping a rhythm. And as you can see, I'm pulling the D string, give it more power. Because if I was to just, it's weak. When we do it like that. So now it's hard to go fast pulling the D string. So you hit it with your thumb. When you're slow, you can go with your index finger. When you go fast, you I like to stress the importance of uh, pulling your hand back. You shouldn't always just try to keep your hand here. You know, if you feel like just pulling it back, pull it back. You know, if you feel like getting wild, just let yourself go wild. Because I found that it makes me more creative. Don't always feel you have to, you know, be, <laughs> be right here. You can pull out, you know, and just go crazy. And now this is lake number 15 and it's from Tokyo which is from my album Out of Control on the Brothers Johnson album and it goes like <laughs> play that one is, is you have to slur the notes together twice and every time you do it you hit a uh, beat after it with no note and the pulls are just you know the standard Cool. I pull it with my index finger hard, real hard. Most of the time when we were recording that song, I'd always break a string on every take. And then you slur this note with that one. And when I go, I'm hitting it kind of with this part of my hand and my thumb at the same time. But not too much right here because it would hit the pickup just enough to give it a boom. Boom. And I'm getting the real thump from here. Now this is lake number 16, it's Strawberry Letter from the Right On Time album. What I'm 
I'm doing is, is I'm going octave all the way up to the D sharp. On the C, I'm not doing an octave, so I can slide and then prepare myself to thump. And the thumps are lazy thumps because the tempo of the song is slow. So And I'm stopping all of the octaves. I'm going instead of And this is lick number 17. It's from the Blam album and it's from Street Wave and it goes like This one is in those days when every song on the radio had to have a, you know, to be a hit. And um, it's the standard type of uh, octave. It's Larry Graham type style. Turn index finger. Very easy to do. with your index finger or just with your thumb. It's very easy and fun. And as you build up speed, it's more difficult. <laughs> Sometimes you like to combine. Gives it a different sound. Because some notes louder than the other notes because you pluck it and then you're just playing the other ones with your thumb so that's how that goes if you're playing it keep playing it try to go as fast as you can so you just fall off the chair <laughs> okay <laughs> And this is number 18. It's from Stomp from the Light Up the Night album. And what we're doing is, is we're having a constant rhythm with the thumb and index finger on G. I run through that slowly. And now this is a little more from Stomp. At the vamp, there's a bass line that goes like. <laughs> now this one is a little difficult because you have to come from here to get the zip sound. You have to. And you can twist it there if you. That's all you want to do. But what I chose to do is to go right down here and do a triplet. It's actually a fourplet. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So you have to go instantly after the, and then just kind of lay there and do some funk thumps like. And it's hard because, like, what happens sometimes is after you go, as you're sliding down, your finger can easily fall off the string. And when it does, it'll 
make you mess up the so you have to remember when you to just go straight down to it and now I'm gonna play that real slow for you This is lick number 20. It's Keep Your Eye on the Sparrow from Earl Clue's record Low Ride. basically uh, octave right here. What I incorporated was some thumps right there because it sounds like to me when Earl played me the song that he needed a bass figure right before the, do -do 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 the theme. So he asked me what would I do and I went and that's all it is. It's a slide from D to E and then a pull with the index finger and then slapping with the bass I mean the uh, thumb and then a walk and I play it for you slow easy lick. Uh, that concludes our tape. I hope you enjoyed it and good luck to you in all your bass adventures. <laughs>